So, Engo.io have recently accepted a pull request of mine. I made it quite a long time ago and kind of forgot about it. But since they've accepted it, I thought I'd make a video talking about the change and how it would affect you. So I'm in the folder engo.io, engo common, which is where all the kind of library systems are and they have collision systems and rendering systems and they're all kind of in here. So I am going to open up the collision one and I will show you some of the things that have changed. Now, a couple of other things have changed since I made my pull request, so I'm not completely used to everything here. Like, for example, this space component now has a rotation to it, which enables a certain level of actual rotation. And that meant a lot more complicated maths in testing whether a colli collision actually happened. I'm not going to get into that right now. We're going to get down to the collision component. Um, which is here, which is the thing that I changed myself, or at least they accepted my pull request. And that was to add this collision group system. The old system, main was just a boolean. And if you were main, then as it ran through the for loop and it checked every item in the system, it would say if it's main check it against all of the others and see if it makes a hit so this would normally be your the players characters the things that you control they need to be able to hit walls and things and other things possibly don't and so we don't we don't want to have everything checking everything only the main things need to check other things the change i've made was to create a system of groups so that when you do your collisions, certain kinds of collisions show up slightly differently in the system and can be treated differently. Um, I'm going to give you an example now. So if we go over here, I've started up the basic principle. So we have a person. He is our main player's character and he hits walls and water. And let's say he hits bats as well. Um, and the bat hits walls but doesn't hit water but we needed to hit the walls so how can we do this if we just had a main collision set the main as a boolean uh, walls and water don't move so they just don't hit each other so we don't they're obviously not going to be main in anything so I'm going to create some groups now obviously this is kind of pseudo code but um, we'll use golang type language so we'll have a, a person group and that will be one and we'll do it with an iota. I'll tell you why we use an iota in a minute. And we'll also have a bat group. And now I don't need to write anything else in there because the dash dash iota means that it's a slide sideways thing. So what you actually end up with is 0001 and here this will be 00010, right? And so on and so forth if you need to make other groups or one, two. If you create his collision component, his main, will be person and his group will be zero and a bat could his main would be oops, bat and its group would also be oh its group would actually be person so the bat can hit the person can't it And then when you make a wall, its main would be zero because it doesn't want to be main. And that, and if its main is zero, then it doesn't need to be checked against everything else. However, its group could be person 
or that. Now that or is a bit wise, which means it will hit on person or bat. So person or bat is obviously is zero zero one one, right? And that means it will hit in either case. Or it can hit. But for water, which can only hit the bat, we would set its main to zero and its group to Oh, it can only hit the person, right? Because the bat doesn't care about the water. So although the bat is main, and the wall would hit the bat if the bat was going around, the wa water wouldn't hit the bat. This means that the collision can system can only pick up the collisions that you care about. So that is why we have the main and group. We also have in the collision system, where is it? The collision system also has a thing it does to push people off of each other if they are in a collision that's considered solid. And this is a thing that I changed. I added the test so the collision system has another bitwise set of items considered solid. And we can create another so maybe we only want the walls to be solid or maybe we want the walls and water to be solid but we don't want to consider the bat solid so let's now create a person solid and a person what's the opposite of solid it's not liquid um, so now our bat main is bat but that's group is person flow because we don't consider that solid. They can fly over each other. However, the wall is person solid. And maybe the bat is considered solid as wall as well. So now we say that our solids, and this is a different thing, right? This is part of the collision system. solids equals and then we would say bat because the bat can't hit the walls either or and that's bitwise again person solid and by creating that separation now the person can hit the water and kind of go through it but we we're, we're told when he hits the water when he hits the wall, it's treated as solid. Oh, we haven't said water. Should we say person solid or person, let's we'll say person flow. So the person can go through the water, but we, we know that the person is in the water. So maybe that can affect his health in some way or some other system. But the point is we get the message if the man is in the water, but if he's, he cannot hit the wall at all, he cannot go through the wall. And that is the basics of the system. Um, let's run through a little bit of the code and say a little bit about how that works. So the remove is, is standard. Here is our update and the update method in the entity component system is the main method that runs 60 times a second or however many however often and it tells you how long it was between the last update and then it runs through the list of entities in the system and it tests if that item is a, if that item is not main i.e. it's bitwise comparison with zero then there's no point in comparing it with anything else so we just don't bother then we try and compare it now we just make sure we get the information about entity A, A, B, B. So we, we grab the A, A, B, B for this item, its object, and we try and find out if it hits anything. So we go through and this is just checking that we're not checking on ourselves. Um, 
and then we see if it has any collision. So if this one's main, the main item's main, does not match with the, the other item's group. So for example, this is a bat hitting water, then you would get the collision of bat over water. The bat's main is bat, and that doesn't match with the person flow, so that means there would be no collision. There's no point in trying to do any of the complicated maths. We just don't bother. After that, we try and find whether they actually collide. And this is some pretty tri tricky maths because it has to call on all of the other collision stuff. You're joking. Considering all of the changes they've made up the top, I was sure the collision system would actually implement the... Oh, we've got the function is intersecting. Okay. No, isn't is intersecting? Let's look that up. That's just the AABBs. So the only thing it actually asks is if the AABBs match. And the AABBs are the outer bounds of their fancy spinning thing now. But that's still not a proper collision check. I would imagine you would, if I wanted to do this, I would say you do the big bounds collision check, you know, the outer bounds, the easy way, right? X, treat it like a rectangle. It's easy to compare two rectangles and see if they collide. But if you've achieved the two rectangles colliding, then you don't need then you go in to do the smaller ones. So you don't do the small and difficult con calculations on things that are miles away. You only do the small and difficult calculations if they're close enough that it's possible they collide. That would be my understanding of how to do this. And that is not what happens here. It's like they've written the methods needed to make the collision, but they've not actually, imp they've not actually called them anywhere. That is crazy. Um, minimum translation yeah that's just the solids thing if they're in the solid group we try and move them so they're not on each other <coughs> so that said we have now looked at the collision component and at least if you want to you can make that group and I'll show you the test that I wrote which was slightly similar I created a ball and a bat type in this iota system and and then I made my objects and gave them collision groups so I made an object that was a ball and that that main was ball and its group was zero and it's then the bat was its main group was bat but it's it was also a ball and the wall could be hit by both the bat and the ball. And then I made a ghost object because that had a zero and a zero because I wanted to make sure there was something that wouldn't collide. Um, and I just ran these tests and I feel really silly for this because I didn't use the assert um, at the time, but I've noticed that they're now using an assert system in their, their test methods. So I should probably switch these to asserts just so that it takes fewer lines of code there but no biggie that's the test system and that's how it works so if you want to make your collision system work now think about you you're expected to make your collision group like this uh, your list of constants and then when you send them to the collision system 
make sure that their collision entity includes the correct details here. This should be person dot collision entity. Something like that. Right. But you have to make your collision entity include these and your constants can be just where you need them so that you can assign them. They don't need to be in the system itself. Now I wanted to talk about the other thing is the changes I want to make to this system because it really frustrates me that we don't use interfaces nearly well enough in this system. So if we go back here and we take in our add methods, right? We've got add by, no, nope. oh, wrong one. Add by, it. so we have two add methods. We have an add, an add which takes the three components separately and we have an add by interface method. Um, and this creates the collision component so that we can add it to the system because the system, it contains an array or a slice uh, collision system contains a slice of collision entity which is something that it makes and this is how all of the components in engo.io work, the systems work. They, they take the three parts or four parts that they need and they throw them together. And this just doesn't use interfaces right. Like Golang is the language of interfaces. So I want to play with a potential thing. I'm not gonna call it a collision system. I'm gonna work with a hit system and I'm not gonna do the weird maths that they've done with the outside of the triangle. I'm going to show how we could do this using interfaces more effectively. So let's go to, let's create a new folder. I'll leave this as it is. Tell you what, let's move this to the right and I'll open up a new one of these. And we can go to Scripts go source no scripts um, CD lessons uh, MKDIR hit system we'll call it hit system All right CD hit system so MVM hit system dot go and this package is not main this package is hit system. We don't need fumped and therefore we don't need a main method, but we do need to implement some the requirements of the thing. So start with our type, type hit system, and that's a struct. And this must contain, well, obviously it needs that, we'll, we'll, we'll keep that solids thing because we'll work with that. Solids, and that's a byte. Let's, yeah, and it's a byte. That's all I need. I might actually create my own type in here for it because they, 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 they can always be converted. We'll call it a hit group. That's a byte. Um, and we also need the, the slice. But here's the thing. I don't think what we should be calling here is we should have a type which is hittable and that's an interface. Um, and inside this interface, obviously we need our ID method, which every ECS object has. So well, this needs an ID. And that returns, um, it's like a uint64, I think. And uh, 
Do we put commas? Yeah. And then we need our our method, and I just want anything that can get me a hitbox. That's it, right? Hitbox, and that returns, and we'll create a type. And we can improve hitbox later, but for now, a hitbox has an x comma y comma w comma h, and these are all float thirty two. And that should say struct uh, nineteen. Um, and the hit system needs to have entities and that's a slice of hittable and we'll just work with the um, the interface right ah Okay, so I think we've fixed up the basic details of that. So a hitbox just has an x, y, h. Now, I'm going to make a quick function on hitbox. x, b, which is also a hitbox, and that returns bool. Okay, and the basic test on whether a hitbox hits another box. This is just the basic one. You can do better than this if you want to get more accurate. If a dot x is greater than b dot x plus b dot w, that's width, return false. that if in any one dimension it is the 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 leftmost point of an object is further than the rightmost point of the other object then they cannot be in collision oh we should return true here so this is our hitbox hit method now i'm not completely comfortable with the hitbox method of returning a hitbox item so I don't like using get when I know that Golang has said no, but at least we can get that hitbox and the hitbox has a hit. Um, now our hit system just has these entities. So when we take something, our add method, oh, it's func, <laughs> func, um, hit, um, and we should probably take a pointer to a hit system on this occasion as we're going to be mutating it and this is add the add method should take a any hittable right oh and then hs dot entities equals append hs dot entities with our new item h and that is all it needs to do nothing fancy there um, our update system needs to be slightly more complicated remove let's do the remove first func hs which is a pointer to a hit system uh, um, remove and we have to do this the traditional way for, for now, but I really think this can be fixed. Basic entity. Um, and we should call that BE. And this doesn't return anything, does it? So when I call hit controller, does it find the... Um, it has, it's found Engo, so that's good. So, we're basically going to loop through everything in here. We 
Okay, um, and that's our remove. It's exactly the same for everything that probably needs to be templated, but we can handle that as is. And then, last but not least, we need our update method. Func hs dot hit system. And this one is update, and this takes a dt, which is a change in time, which is a float 32, I think. Again, that doesn't return anything. So. As before, we need to loop through. Loop. Oh! I tell you what else our hittable needs to do. It needs to get. Hit groups. And this will return. Um, a hit group hit group oh these should be in brackets shouldn't they yeah and that's how we're gonna get the hit groups for our objects okay that works all right four K comma V colon equals range HS dot entities. Now, first things first, HG, oh, MG and main group and G group group colon equals HS dot. V dot hit groups. Okay. Now we can do a very quick test on this. In fact, we don't even need the GG. Um, if MG equals zero, continue as before. Otherwise, we need to do another for loop for J comma well, let it comes after V. Let's not call it W. The group object colon equals range HS dot entities. Okay. Now we need a similar check on this if gob is equal to V and then we continue we don't want to do this test on the same object if um, um, underscore comma GG Cannot equals gob dot hit groups. If MG or bitwise and this is an and. If mg and gg, then we have a collision. So if this is does not equal to zero, no, if this equals zero, then we don't have a collision and we can continue. Like so. M oh hey VHB colon equals V dot hit V dot hit dot 
It was get hit box now, wasn't it? Okay, and here we need G H B equal equals gob dot get hitbox if vhb dot hit ghb hang on we can just do this as a not continue again so if they don't hit then we can go back and carry on around the rest of them And then if they do hit, we probably need to send out the message and then we need to check on the solids thing. So let's do the message first, which means we need to make a hit message. hit message um, and this needs um, main it's a hittable group hittable um, Yeah, this is, uh, I think it's supposed to be an optimization thing. Um, but in order to go be a hit message, your hit mess to be a message that you can send through the ECS system, it needs to get this type. So, func uh, hit me message type And that returns a string. Yep. Return hit message. Okay. And that that's for the listener. When something's listening for a hit message on the the message system, it's going to look for something which returns hit message as its type. Um, what are the other things that uh, the collision message contains so I can see whether I need any of those? Groups. So it takes, it includes groups. I'll call it group of. It's also worth noting this system that I'm doing here with the interfaces actually allows me to return the actual object that was sent to me. This system, the message that comes back is basically just a separate object which contains the three components required and so you can't access any of the other information about the intended object and that is another advantage of doing this using interfaces. So, once we've got our group object, no, we can, at this point, the hit system, when we found our update method, we've, we've got through, at this point, we're pretty sure it's a hit. So we can send that message and it's um, when we actually send it collision message it's engo.mailbox.dispatch right the, the mailbox is like a singleton so we can just drop stuff out 
into it quite safely. So we'll do that. Engo dot mailbox dot dispatch and in here we're going to put a hit message whose main ob is v and whose group ob is b is gob right and of course i need the uh, the wiggly brace and the only other thing we need to do is that move out of the way thing um, let's take a quick look because we've, we've not taken into account the solidness of the objects but we can do that here um, solid nope solid Minimum translation. I'm pretty sure that's a function that exists in here. Minimum translation. And does it return? It returns a translation. It returns a point, so it doesn't even do the translation. So we should we should do a check if it's solid. Let's. Um, if mg and gg and hs dot solid um, and that's bitwise again so that means this is a solid collision then we need to do a thing and what do we need to do we need to do that minimum translation. Again, this can probably be done better and it'll belong to the hitbox. So let's give that function to the hitbox because then we can, then if we change the hitbox, how that works, we can change most of this <coughs> without worry. So, where's our hitbox? This takes A, which is the hip box, and then we need a minimum, minimum, tra minimum step off. I yeah, it's a translation, but it's the minimum distance we need to step off, and let's call it minimum step off D, and that will also return a point. Maybe we just return an X and a Y and forget the encode dot point. Minimum step of D and this will take B which is our hitbox as well and this will return uh, DX comma DY. And yeah, it's a little bit of a tricky function there, isn't it? Okay, so we'll have an angle. Angle equals minus one for now. Dist curl equals B dot H rightmost minus A dot sorry, bottommost minus A dot topmost and angle equals two. If oh and then we need to do left. If B dot oh uh, 
if it's the left, then we're going with a first. a dot x plus a dot y minus b dot. Oh no, that's a w minus b dot x. It's less than dist. Then dist equals b dot equals a dot x plus a dot w minus b dot x and a dot mind you at this point we know it's left so we don't even need to return that we can just return um, that is how much further a is than b so we need to negate this um, b dot x minus and zero zero return <laughs> okay zero is the top so it's zero comma minus this I feel like it's almost right let's um case one return this is left rightmost so we just want dist nor case two return nor dist do I need to require the distance to be positive Let's let's start work on the test library for this because um, let's see if this thing compiles. All right. CD scripts CC lessons hit system. Okay, go build. Let's see what we've got. Okay, hit system twenty eight forty four. Of course. No, they're float thirty two. And hit system sixty eight. What's he complaining about? Uh, undefined hit message because that needs another S. Is that all I got? Oh, that's more like it. Uh, 51, missing return at the end of 55, one. Possibly just that if I made that a B, it will, um, yeah, it found it. Uh, hit system 117. Dot 117. Oh, right, yeah. This could do with having access to a push thing. Let's, um, let's add a push method to the hittable uh, 
um, that should probably that could be an Engo dot point I don't know so the point is I just I'm not sure if push is the right word for this either but I can at least go d dot push all right um, dx comma dy can equals um, dhb dot minimum step off and that's from ghb right. and um, and then we'll do v dot push dx comma dy Hundred and eighteen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the actual complaint was this was supposed to be does not equal zero. K declared and not used, ninety eight. All the usuals. Really, I never used K. Meh. And 104 J declared and not used. Remember, I spent all of that time trying to think about use, using J. Still, or what to call that that letter. That's kind of funny. <laughs> okay, so that builds, but obviously we don't know if it works because we haven't tried it. So let's try the minimum distance one. Tab edit. Um, here. System test dot go. Um, and we need a um, couple of hitboxes, don't we? So funk test min distance. T pointer to testing dot T DY. Okay, I'm going to try and run this test now. So basically, what I've done, I've created two hitboxes. There's a slight overlap, and um, I've just asserted that DX equals minus eight and DY equals zero. So if we come over here, go test dot dash, see what we get. Fail, DX wrong. Float 32 minus three. Minus three, that's not what I expected. Can I do the math to get a minus three? But it, it got a zero on the Y. So, can I argue for the minus three? We've got a box at 20, 20. And actually, this should be the distance that A has to move. So I would expect it to be positive. Let's just draw these boxes, shall we, on paper? So, they're both 20 by 20. is eight. So I would expect A to have to move positive eight. Let's try this again. Fail, because it's still got float 32 minus three. Um, I wonder if I change that to an F, it will uh, Aha! That should be a width. Okay. Uh, 
And that should be a win. Okay, we found it. It works for the right. Okay, and the, the hit system testing now works. Let's see if we can give a solid test to actually creating the system and running it. So that means creating objects that have behaviors. <laughs> Okay, so I've written a test for the hit system now, and I'm just going to quickly show it to you. Um, so I'm testing the update method, so I've got to actually add everything to it. In the end, I just created a quick function to throw together some objects. I was going to make more of these, and I probably will when I want to make the test more exhaustive. But basically, here's my x, y, width, height, and this is in collision group. This is main in collision group 1, and this one has a slightly different thing and I decided to make solids happen on collision group one as well so I added the two things to the system both of these interfaces oh yeah I had to make the actual um, the type which is um, a hit me struct and I had to write a push get hitbox and hit groups methods for it and I added I called the update and I wanted to see if the solid collision had happened and the um, and the box had moved appropriately which in the end it had another challenge I had is of course that this is dependent on a much bigger system and when I called the engo dot mailbox dispatch it threw a wobbly uh, because mailbox hadn't been initialized because it wasn't running the whole system at the time so I had to create that as a safety so anyway the important things let's go back over the entire system show you all the things we've done today we using the hit group type we created a hitbox um, which is a basic hitbox but the important thing the hitbox has is its hit method um, and it can hit on another hitbox this type may need changing but in fact, I definitely want this type to change. I'd like to have an outer bounds and then a couple of inner bounds boxes or something like that. Next, um, we created the hittable interface because instead of taking a set of components, I just wanted to take anything that could ha provide these methods. ID comes from the ECS component, basic entity. And these three methods are required for detecting collisions. Push is actually a questionable method. I'm tempted not to require it, but in the case that someone that that we're running solid code conditions, that could work. So the hittable interface is the difference between this system and the collision system as it has been. It's how everything works without needing to keep grabbing entities all the time. So that made our our add method much more simple. The hit message is just how you get your message out to whatever got hit. The hit system just has what's solid and the list of entities which are just hittable. And now we have an add method. We don't need add by interface. We just take the single hittable thing and stick it in the list. We don't need to worry about any weird things there. So much simpler to write. Um, the remove again I said before but this should take an, an ID that's probably the thing to actually suggest as the priority um, dispatch is a to a so yeah the dispatch method that's just a safety so that I can run it as a test rather than needing a 
and other things. But the update method is where all of the work happens. We loop through all of the entities. If they are not a main in a collision, we don't do anything else with them. But if they are, then we need to check all of the other entities and make sure that they're not the same entity, because obviously if we're looping through the same thing twice, we might do that, and make sure that they actually hit. If they don't hit, we can continue. And if they're not in the same collision group, we can continue. But if they are hit, then we dispatch a message. And if they are hit and solid, then we will calculate the minimum step off distance. That's something that Hitbox provides. And we push them by that step off distance. And that's basically everything this system does. It's, I'd say it's a lot simpler to use than some of the other systems. Certainly consider it as an option. <laughs> Hope you found this all very helpful. I will see what I can do about talking to the Engo guys about getting this on the, the system. Um, and let me know if you thought this was a good idea. Let me know if you think this is a bad idea. Just talk to me. I get lonely. See you next week. My name's Matt Studley from storyfeed.com and you have just watched a video.